His pants are not. Um... All right. Well, hello and welcome back to another edition of Style RX. This Friday, we are blessed to have a couple stylist friends of ours with us to talk about body types. And um, this Style RX is something that we do every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Mountain, noon Central, and 1 Eastern. So you can join us live, you can watch the replay, you can even ask for the replay link. If something that you see or hear today, you, you've got friends that you think, oh my gosh, she needs to see this or hear this, um, please ask us for the link. We're more than happy to share and share us with your friends. So um, we are a group of stylists that are passionate about helping you feel amazing in your skin and in your clothes. And so today is going to be all about body types. And um, some, some different things I want you to know is you will be the same body type, whether you lose weight or gain weight, you're going to be the same body type. So if you are, if you traditionally carry your weight through the middle or through your hips, if you lose five pounds or 20 pounds, you're still going to have wider proportions at your hips than at, you know, like your shoulders. So just know that body tape types are going to be standard unless you're pregnant or something like that. So um, first things first, I dropped my tape. So let me grab that. <laughs> okay. Something that you're going to need to know your body type is get a fabric tape. These are, you know, nice bunchy um, things. So you can take your fabric tape and some important measurements are your shoulders, your bust, your waist, and to know your natural waistline, it's helpful to kind of side bend and where you're where you actually break there on your side, that's your natural waist. And then your hips. And you wanna go across the widest part of your hips and your rear. It's important that your tape stays level all the way around. So you don't want it to be sagging in the back. So when you're taking your measurements, make sure it stays level. The other thing that you want to make sure is um, that you've got your undergarments on and that's it. So. Um, and make sure, I guess your foundations, I'm going to say just a little bit about foundations real quick because um, they're so important. Like your, your bras, you want to make sure that you have been sized and you're properly sized in your bra, especially if you've had any weight gain or loss or fluctuation. Um, essentially, if you've not been measured in the last six months, get measured and probably you're going to need to update your, um, your bras and your foundations. But have a good foundation that is uplifting if you're a larger gal like me and you're going to like for your bust measurement make sure that you've got um, not a chunky sweater on like I do today but you're just going to go across the widest part of your bust and then you don't want to pull it so tight that you're like squishing things or if you're at your waist that you can't breathe you just want it to be snug okay so if you need some extra tips on measurements visit with your stylist. If you need some extra tips on deciphering your measurements, um, vision, visit with your stylist. But today we're gonna go um, across some of the more common body types. And first up is Bo, and she's going to visit about the triangle shape. Okay, so welcome everyone. So glad you could join us. So I am a triangle, okay? And um, in, in fruit language, that would be a pear, but we really aren't doing fruit anymore. But um, I am definitely a triangle. And so what I wanna say about that is I'm gonna give you a celebrity, um, a couple, well, a celebrity that is a typical triangle. And this is really an exaggerated triangle, but because I am not an exaggerated triangle, I'm going to go ahead and share the exaggerated version. And that would be the Kardashian women, okay? Like them, don't like them regardless. They are um, triangles and this is why. So a typical triangle proportions are narrow shoulders, a defined waist, and then they carry their weight in their uh, bottoms and in their thighs. And so the proportions are three, two, four. So, um, I, um, if I am going to gain or lose weight, 
I'm always going to gain my first 10 pounds in my hips and my thighs and my bottom. I'm always going to lose weight. Those last 10 pounds are going to come off from my hips, my thighs, and my bottom. So the first 10 go there, the last 10 to come off go there. So that is just how I'm built. Now, today I'm wearing something that um, doesn't give me the shape of a triangle, and that is kind of the objection, or the objective, I should say, to do, is we want to create that balance, that, you know, infinity uh, uh, figure eight, and so that is really where we're going, is to create balance. And in order for me to do that, is that I've got to keep that eye going up. And so I give my, I'm wearing the Spencer right now. This is all um, first line pieces. I, or fall line pieces, I've got to create the eye to go up. So I have to broaden my shoulders. I have to nip in my waist. Okay, and then I do the best I can to kind of uh, minimize um, my bottom and my uh, hip and thigh area. And so I've got on uh, our great houndstooth trouser. They are a flat front, which I love. And then um, again, I have this great nipped in waist with the Spencer jacket. I've drawn the eye up. I also like to create a lot of interest around my neck area. Because again, that is what is going to keep me, um, keep that eye to my eye level rather than drawing to where it naturally goes, which is hips and thighs. Um, I also, so I, another thing I like to do is enhance my waist. Even though um, some uh, triangles do have a more defined waist, mine is not super defined. So I, I do like to create that with the defined waist, like this great Spencer jacket, or if I'm wearing, um, you know, clothing, I'll do that front tuck always, always, always. Um, or sometimes what I'll do is I'll have on a tunic length piece, but I always cut myself with a shorter jacket. Something like um, I have on the back wall here, we have this snap top with um, this is a vintage cardin, car, um, cardigan, the Bishop. I also have the goals cardigan with the seismic top. And I'm gonna always leave that down there because I wanna, again, create more of a natural waist. Um, things that I avoid are tunics. So, you know, everyone loves leggings and tunics. That is not me because I look like I'm walking around like a box. So that is not something that I can wear um, as much as I'd like to. If I do wear it, it's usually around the house because I'm comfy, cozy, and um, the figure eight or balance is not necessarily in play for me. But those are, those are the things that um, really are important for me. And then what I need to avoid is anything that's going to draw attention to that thigh, hip, and bottom area. Now, um, I'm going to backpedal a little bit to the Kardashians because, again, love them, don't love them. They do are those. They are really, um, you know, symbolic of that triangular shape. And then, kind of the other thing that they brought to the forefront is that they do embrace those curves. And so, you know, um, I'm just probably a little more old school, and I'm not necessarily. It's not that I, I don't. You know, there's no body shaming here is what I'm trying to say, but it's just not me to go out and, you know, flaunt um, what I have. And so, but those women do and more power to them, I guess. Again, it's not a body shaming thing for, for me. It's just how it is. It's just kind of what I was ingrained in. The last thing I want to say is a little bit about arm arms and sleeves and what I do. I also have to keep weight away from my um, arms. And so that's why I'm always judging up my sleeves. I'll put a little bit of interest again at my wrist or my ankle. Um, again, because that's where the eye will draw to and those are more flattering pl pieces that are places rather than here. I'm not going to tend to wear a bell sleeve very often. Um, and uh, again, for the reason of, I do not want to create volume around here. So that's all I have to say about the triangle. I think we're going on next to um, Tabitha or Amy, and you guys get to share your beautiful you box. Uh-huh. Um, 
So I'm totally with Bo in, in the idea of while I am all about um, embracing the body that you have, um, different people have different comfort levels with what parts of their body they like to enhance. So I am officially an hourglass and depending on definitions, um, a full figured hourglass. And so whether I am a size um, 10, whether I'm a size 14, whether I'm a size 18, my shoulders and hips are pretty even and then my waist goes in proportionally. So unlike Bo, who tends to gain and lose down here, I luckily <laughs> um, gain and lose sort of everywhere pretty proportionately. Um, and so I find, I feel like I'm really grateful for that. Um, I, I um, just wanna make sure I, my neighbor is mowing the lawn, so I wanna make sure you can hear me. Um, so I, what's important for an hourglass is, um, especially a busty hourglass like me, is to make sure you still see my waist. So for example, um, a lot of times those of us who do have a little bit of tummy or a little bit of weight in the middle are hesitant to tuck in, right? Because we feel like that might kind of enhance or point to that area. But if you see how I have the stellar top and the carpenter, I really just have this kind of like up and down, nothing, you know, my, my bust kind of pulls everything out and it tends to make me look bigger than I am. But if I do just a little front tuck, then next thing you know, everything just kind of collapses and you can see that our glacier last shape a little bit better. Um, but you notice that I am wearing a, a blouse that kind of is loose from my body rather than something that's particularly form fitting. That's a personal choice. So there are some hourglasses who would much prefer to wear things close to their body and show off that shape. Um, and so I think to Bo's point, we really want to encourage you um, while we're giving you tips to kind of help you create balance with the body that you have. It isn't about saying, um, if you're straight up and down and don't have a waist, then you need to find a waist. It's really what you're comfortable with. So for me, I'm not comfortable with things super tight. I like to show off my shape, but I don't want it form fitting. Um, something like a V-neck is really flattering on all different body types because it draws the eye up. For me, it breaks up the real estate of the bust. So if I have a shirt that comes up real high, then kind of all you see is this, but the V-neck, creates a little bit of a camouflage. And then oftentimes busty or um, fuller women on top kind of tend to stay away from the ruffles and kind of all the stuff going on up here, which I agree with, except that if you like it, wear it. Um, I think that's so important as you think about what feels good on you. Um, yes, how other people see you um, can affect how you feel about yourself, but really you want to be able to look in the mirror and feel good about what you see. So I like the subtle ruffles of the stellar without it really drawing more attention to my bust. Um, and so in terms of bottoms on an hourglass, we really can get away with um, a lot and it really depends on what you want to emphasize. So for example, the carpenters that I have on are high-waisted um, pant, which I really like and tend to show off my waist better than a low rise. However, um, the fabric of these and the carpenter detail also add a little bit of bulk. That doesn't bother me personally. I love the color, they're stretchy, they're comfortable, so I embrace that. But if you're trying to take away attention from this part of your body, these might not be the right pant. So those are kind of some of the things that we talk through when we're talking about body type and really trying to create balance. And then when we add a layer to what I have on as an hourglass, um, I prefer something with a little bit of length um, so that I still can have my waist showing. Um, while some body types you'll see a crop jacket helps to create that waist, for me it kind of creates more of an up and down rather than a definition. And so if I'm going to add a topper, most likely my topper is going to be longer or if it's short it's going to be a more close fitted to the body type of topper. Another thing that I could do when you think about like the, the um, coffee shop cardigan, which I adore, it's like your very own um, cozy blanket. So again, it's long and it could be really bulky, but because I have the defined waist, it's okay. But what I also could do is I could take my belt and I could use 
my belt to define my waist with something that is big and bulky, right? So that is another way that I could still create shape and show off the curves if I so choose. And then another option, which I had fun with, with some of our dresses, um, and it won't be as effective with my, um, the top that I've chosen today. I might like this better with like the, sur the surround top or where you do like a column of color. So everything's the same from top to bottom. And then you pop on our rebel shirt. And for this one, I wanna make sure my shirt's all the way tucked in. And you could take the rebel shirt and you could tie it and you could do a knot or another trick is just to take your button and button that and then you kind of have the look of the knot but it stays better and then look how that just kind of really creates that hourglass shape or emphasizes the hourglass shape so that is an hourglass and i think we're going to move on to rebecca Yes, I am up. Thanks, Tabitha. That's excellent. So I'm actually an hourglass as well, but I'm going to be talking the diamond shape today. Um, and so if you are someone that battles some middle management issues, this might be you. Typically, my diamond shaped women um, have fantastic legs and everybody is jealous of those, but where they're a little bit self-conscious is through their middle because um, you tend to carry your weight there. And so some different options for you. First of all, it's all about bringing the eye up and down. So I would be a perfect diamond because I love shoes and all sorts of fun colors and you know every kind of shoe there is so some thoughts first of all I have this great pop of blue shoe on and so if you um love heels and bright colors this is for you but I've got some other options so a white shoe, it's kind of back to art class. So things that are light, our eye is drawn to. Things that are dark, our eye is not as drawn to. So white is going to immediately attract the eye. That's kind of a fun little snakeskin pump. And if you're a sneakers girl, then look for bright colors. I know Amy had a fun mustard one in um, last week's, I think it was, that we highlighted. But then look at these fun deals. They are so stinking cute and obviously everybody's going to be very honed in on your shoes. So today I have a scarf on. So I love scarves. If you're not a scarf girl, then maybe rock a nice big earring to bring the eye up, a hat, um, lots of different things, chunky necklaces, layers of necklaces, anything to bring that eye up, pattern tops, bright tops, especially I love um, color blocked pieces that maybe have a dark bottom and then a lighter or brighter um, top part of it. So look for things like that. Um, because you have amazing legs, then you can absolutely rock our cute little maestro trouser, or if you wanna take this and dress it down a little bit, another favorite of mine is the high skinny. And it's just so super fun with this really distinctive wash. So Diamond Girls, the world is your oyster. Don't limit yourself. Um, rock what you've got and the higher rise jeans are really really great for um, middle management issues to just kind of hold everything in but if you find that you've got a little bit shorter of a rise then we've absolutely got a pant that'll work for you as well so visit with your stylist in depth and amy i think we're going to you girl okay i love sitting back and watching my fabulous friends talk all their knowledge and one thing we were going to talk about and they didn't is we wanted to tell you all how long we have been stylists um so i've been a stylist for 12 seasons this time around it's my second time running the business 10 seasons before i know tabitha's up there in her 20th season um rebecca's right there with me around 11 12 and i can't remember what both said but we just wanted to let you guys know that we're all coming with lots of years of styling women and so we have a lot of confidence bringing this to you my body type is a rectangle but i'm borderline that inverted triangle because i am pretty broad through the shoulders 
but I also, if you look straight from here, I'm pretty much up and down. I do not have a defined waist. And so if you think about bodies in shape, we have our inverted triangle, we have our triangle, we have our rectangle, and then we have our diamond that comes out. So for a rectangle, it's really important to try and create that vision of both an inverted and a regular triangle to create that weight. So today, the first thing I did is Rebecca mentioned jewelry, and I've got a ton of layer jewelry, and the longest one is going to help bring that eye down, especially because I'm in a round neck. The reason I'm in column dressing is I really wanted you to be able to see how square I truly am. And the only thing that would truly change my body type, I know Rebecca mentioned that it would be the same if you gain or lower weight, but if I were to get a boob job and gain some weight on my butt, I would become a natural hourglass. So that is that in pregnancy, there's a few times that your body may change shape, but often it's not. No matter how much weight I gain right now or lose, I'm pretty square. So I wanted to give you a couple visuals and a couple celebrities that I think are very classic rectangle shape are Cameron Diaz. She's very athletic in the body. Jessica Bill is also, but one that's very classic and actually a very petite version is Kate Middleton. And I'm gonna show you a vintage cabbie coat that will give a complete throwback to Kate Middleton. Um, so the first thing that I need to do to create shape and to create that waist, one thing I do a lot is I will just wear something cropped. So you can see that I'm bringing color, but this is also elongating, so inside. But the other thing that I do often is I will take, I love Obi style belts um, because they do, you can wrap them and create shape however you want. I don't normally tie them under a jacket, but it's that idea and Rebecca is completely frozen on my screen. I don't know if she is on you guys' screen or not, but it's the idea of wearing that jacket and then still breaking that up and creating that waist. So you can see that there. Now I am wearing the high skinny and it is also an incredible, if you guys can just mute really quick, we're gonna leave some time open um, for question and answers, but Every time there's background noise, I think it's pulling the camera away from the recording. Okay. Now you can see just in my monochromatic outfit, just by adding this little belt that I did underneath the jacket, it automatically just pops in and gives me some shape. So I would wear a monochromatic top like this on a day and maybe just go exactly like this. So I love that a belt also dresses it up. I wanted to give you a very true um, Kate Middleton look because a lot of people think she's an hourglass, but she is not. She is as rectangle as it comes. She's just so petite through the body. And so you will notice most every single jacket that she wears has an A-frame to it and it's very tailored. So I know you're all going to be very envious of this vintage cabbie coat. You cannot get it. I'm so sorry. This is a preview for my clients. I am going to do a highlight next week of all my favorite vintage coats. But you'll notice it is very structured. It's double breasted and has princess seaming coming down. The pockets right here even help bring width to the shoulders as well as the hips. But it's truly tapered in and tailored. So you can see just by me adding this coat, what it does for me. It totally does that inverted triangle, triangle look and creates that hourglass. And this is one of those cabbie classic coats that I will never, ever, 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 ever get rid of because it is so, so amazing. But I thought immediately of Kate Middleton and how classic and beautiful her style is. She's super sporty, but when she does feminine, she does it really, really well. And the other thing I mentioned, the one crop jacket there, 
Rebecca really, everybody's talking about color up top. I also love to do color, even though I'm broad. Um, these crop jackets are some of my favorites because they really do help me um, create a waist that I do not have. But you can see just by keeping that black belt on, just like Tabitha did with the long sweater, it actually is doing the same thing for me to create shape. And even if it was monochromatic, so I have one of these OB belts that's also just gray. And I am a huge fan of column dressing for that reason. But just by even adding one that's a little off color that's gray, anything you can do. And like Rebecca said, if it's lighter, it will draw the eye. So just depending on what you want to wear, if you have anything on your waist and you're of an athletic build or a rectangle build, it is really a great thing. And also high-waisted trousers, I could tuck in all the way and not even do a belt. The other great thing for rectangle shape is a flare jean um, because again, it brings balance to the bottom and helps you create a, a much smaller waist. So I think that's it on the four main body types. Please know if you are petite or plus size, all of these rules still align for you. It does not change if you fall into that petite or plus size um, end of the scale because the body types are the same. It's just you might be taller or, or excuse me, shorter, or you might be um, carrying a little bit more weight. One thing I wanna to talk to you about really quick before we open up for questions. Some of you may have um, seen the promotion that Cabby is doing right now. And we wanted to talk to you guys about this really quick because it ends on Sunday or before supplies run out. So if you've had a few favorites that you've been waiting on or you've had some pieces in your cart that you just haven't clicked check out with, um, Cabby is giving one or the other, either the liner tank or our great crossover, crosswalk tee away for free if you have a purchase of $150 or more. So if you've been waiting on one of these pieces, this is a great value, it's a great time to do it. You can order through Cabby Tap through your stylist website. You can contact whoever your stylist is and she can place the order for you. But um, they only announced it I think yesterday was the first day and it ends Sunday. So please don't wait if those are one of the two tops that you wanna get. Also, one other quick point. If you enjoy these, please give us feedback, reach out to your stylist. We're so grateful that Tabitha and Bo are so willing to come in and be guest specialists with us. Um, and if you're loving all the pieces and you haven't hosted your own fashion experience, reach out to your stylist because we have so many ways we can do that, especially in this COVID time. We have our front row platform. We do personal styling appointments. Um, there's so many ways that we can help you even enjoy the hostess benefits that we can offer to you as stylists. So that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. So now you guys can go ahead and unmute your computers. And we are just gonna turn this over to you to go ahead and ask some questions. Rebecca, I see you're not frozen anymore, but you're still frozen on my phone, which is <laughs> kind of funny. I'm not sure why, but I have you with your eyes closed and everything. So um, go ahead and open up. And if you guys have questions regarding a particular body type or for a particular stylist, let us oh. know. It looks like I'm twinning with Janine. Are you? Let me see. Yeah. I have to go to my other computer. She's muted, but I think we're, we're I think we're both wearing the same shirt. <laughs> Just so you know, Amy, I have that pink jacket as well. And it's one that will never, ever, ever, ever leave my closet either. I know. Isn't it amazing? I mean, and it's got our old branding on it. I can't even remember what season it's from. It's probably from like 06, 07, maybe I want to say. Long time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have a question for Tabitha since we're twinning. We're twinning. We do about this stuff. Oh no. The problem I have with Cabby is, and I've tried certain things and they just don't work. 
Yeah, so I will send you a picture of, um, I have, I don't, I'm not wearing it right now because mine seems to be fine with this, but um, there's like a plastic thing. <laughs> I'm so it professional. Is. It's a plastic it disc. Work. Say it, again? The disc didn't work. It was, it was, it, it just didn't work. It was too, too tight. So is there another, another type of thing? Yeah, I bought something and it, it will not work on my bras. Hmm. I know with mine, I had to loosen my bra strap all the way. Did that, did you try that? And that still didn't work. I'm gonna have to think and about this one. Janine, I showed a, a strap. Has anybody done a long strap thing? Oh, well, I, I have done a ribbon before. So I've just taken and tied a ribbon behind my um, shoulders and hold, held my bra straps together that way. The other thing I was going to recommend is go wherever you typically get fitted for your bras. And if you haven't for a while or several years, it would be a good thing to go in because there are so many new styles that are like moderate racer backs where they're not completely um, like come right in on the neck. They're a little more modified. And I would also take in a couple of the tops that, okay. with you. So that when they are fitting you for the bra, you can say, this is one of my favorite tops, but my bra is always showing, help me. And they can find a bra that will both be comfortable, support you, and work for the clothes. But I would say, for sure, use a bra specialist. Yeah, that's my biggest complaint. I went to a very fancy one in Washington, D.C., and, you know, there's no way I can go back there. But, you know... Uh, yeah. That's my biggest complaint with most some of the cabby tops is that. Okay. Well, when you come up here to visit, maybe we can go <laughs> together and find you a new one. Okay. Hey, I need a new bra, Tabitha. Can I come see yes, you? Yes, please. <laughs> I was also going to say, if that's your problem, maybe, maybe look into some of the tops instead of that have the smaller straps, like the wildflower top has it like the it's still sleeveless but it's got almost four fingers width of coverage um I don't do sleeveless clothes at all and so as much as I love them it's hard for me sometimes to want to layer all the time so a lot of times I just won't buy a sleeveless piece even if I really love it I'll go for an alternative piece um because for me I don't do sleeveless so it's a personal thing, but I hope you find a solution. Tabitha is awesome. I have no doubt she'll get you in a bra or find a functionality that will work. Any other questions? I was just going to suggest maybe um, do a racer back bra. Have you tried that? You know, when you're so big, that yeah. just really is uncomfortable. Okay. Okay. I don't have that I, problem. <laughs> I, let me, but Tabitha, I wanna, right, Tabitha? Yes, we, we're soul sisters in that regard. <laughs> have, you, have, you ever tried the, the, have you ever tried the 31 bras? Let me, I'm going to run and go grab one because it's got padding all through the shoulder right here. And they actually do an online profile test that could help you. And their bras have been amazing. I'm actually wearing one right now. And they're really, really comfortable, but I've got one um, that's meant and intended for real busty women that's got padding down through the strap. And I wonder yeah. if they would have um, a racer back that would be more comfortable for you. Let me run and go grab it and I can tell you the brand and what style bra it is. And I'll be right back. Rebecca, take it away. You get to moderate now. Okay, let's see. Well, uh, next week, what are we talking about next week? Oh, it's all about accessories next week. So we're going to be talking shoes and bags and jewelry and scarves and hats and all the things. And then the following <laughs> week on Style RX, we have um, another 
special edition because we've got our second set of new arrivals called Ocean 8 that are going to be out. Um, so the 23rd, we'll have some guest stylists on and we'll talk through every single piece on that new arrival collection and answer questions for you. And so I know it's going to be really, really rich. And I see Amy is back. With my big old bra. Okay, so this has a really nice strap to it. Um, I have to confess, I remove tags from everything. So the bra I'm currently wearing, when I take it off, I think the tag's still on that one. I will text Tabitha the link and she can get it yeah. to you. But I did just my fitting profile online and it was very accurate and I've loved them ever since. And so I will let you know. But I, I do know this, the comfort level is a really hard thing. Um, because although I'm rectangle, I'm quite busty because mine were a little pricey, but um, I have to have a good bra. So, <laughs> you know. Wait, isn't I the point get... of paying for them that you don't have to wear a bra anymore? Yeah! <laughs> well, that was the case until I got pregnant and had another child oh. and nursed another child. Gosh, they so, ruin everything, don't they? They do! <laughs> I went from, you know, I went from having natural perky boobs in high school to the cover of National Geographic back to perky boobs and now I'm back on the National Geographic. So, you know, those children that suck the life out of you, I guess they're worth it. Sorry, but I'm terrible. You wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't, but my husband, because I do lift weights, this is a funny, you guys that get to know me, I will tell you everything. But um, because I lift weights, I was joking with him one day and my, my boobs are under the muscle they're not on top and I was joking and I just kind of went like this and what was left from me nursing my third child just kind of hung down <laughs> and my muscle and implants got imp like compressed and he goes don't don't ever <laughs> do that again <laughs> I was like oh come on so then I had to figure out what he was seeing <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was being so cute, and he was like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> so Too much. All right. So okay, the moral well, of the I, story is to practice your sexy look prior to showcasing it, right? Yes, apparently I don't have a bedroom look, so... <laughs> I might I just um, end the recording. I'm just going to add to that by don't that. do yoga. Don't do yoga in front of your husband either. It's, yeah. No. It, okay. It's Since you said that, I had the cutest client. She was probably all of 90 pounds, maybe four foot nine. She was um, down at the University of Utah. She was like the head rheumatoid arthritis doctor. Just this amazing doctor. So funny, but like a teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny woman. And one day we were all laughing and they'd had a glass of wine. She says, I'll tell you something. When I'm doing my naked push-ups, my boobs hit the ground before I even get there. <laughs> oh, it just cracked me up because she was just so teeny tiny. And she's, oh yeah, I do my push-ups before I ever get dressed. But gosh, the older I get, the more naked I am. They just hit faster. <laughs> so. See what we talk about at Tabby yeah. Shows. Yeah, you just say. never know what you're going to find out about at Style RX. <laughs> I know. <laughs> or with Amy. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just curious what you're going to say about accessories, Rebecca, because I just can't imagine you having any kind of contribution that way. No. no I, I'm, I'm happy hard to be here. <laughs> okay, you guys, don't forget the promo ends on Sunday. So if you've been interested, in anything and you really are wanting to get that free shirt you have to submit your order before sunday um but contact us let us know whoever invited you to this is who you should reach out to um we love to have you so thank you so much for joining us we went a little over on time but we love you so much and we want to rebecca and i want to thank beth or excuse me tabitha and Bo again for joining us and we cannot wait to see you next week all right, ladies. Have a wonderful day, you guys. See you later. Bye. Thank you.